talking about now is the mole. And we're just going to talk about L charts today. That's it, okay? So what I'm going to talk about is, first of all, what the mole is. Everyone write this number. One mole is equal to, anybody know what the mole is equal to without looking at their paper? You can just call it out. 6.02 times 7 to the 23rd, but that's not what you're going to write down. You're going to write 6.02, and if it's 10 to the 23rd, but we've already used two places, then how many zeros do I have left to use? 21. Go ahead and count on your own. 21 zeros is what you're going to write. 21. Okay. That is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? You do 21 zeros because we have two that are added, two numbers added in there as well. That is a mole of anything. Now, what would we have a mole of? Would you have this many of, this many cars in the world? Would we have this many people in the world? Would we have this many strawberries in the world? Would we have this many eggs in the world? Probably not. So I'm gonna scroll down here for just a second, and I'm gonna show you that, here's something that I found online that I really liked. This is what a mole is equal to, and the population of the world here at the time that this chart was made was six billion, okay? So that's how many people there are, and you can see that you could have a trillion, you could have quadrillion, you could have quintillion. Where does this fall? Sextillion, okay? So one mole is a lot of some things, okay? You don't have a lot of, you don't have a mole of these things that we can see with our eyes. You have a mole of things that we can't see with our eyes, like what? atoms and molecules. So I'm going to show you what a mole of water, for example, looks like that we could see, okay? So here I have um, another example, and this is something that I found online too. It says, while a dozen eggs will make a nice omelet, a mole of eggs would actually fill all of the oceans on Earth, not just fill all the oceans on Earth, more than 30 million times over, okay? More than 30 million times over. That's what a mole of eggs would look like. Not only would you fill all the oceans with eggs, but 30 million times you would fill them, okay? A mole is a huge number. We don't really understand it, okay? It is a huge number. And it says, think about it, it would take 10 billion chickens laying 10 eggs per day, more than 10 billion years to lay a mole of eggs. So that's how long it would take. But then let me show you something. This is a mole of water. That's a mole of water. So. What? Yeah, is right. Because why is it that for eggs, we could fill oceans 30 million times over, but for one mole of water, this is all it is. Why? Because they are so small. Can you see molecules with your eyes? No. Is there any microscope that we can use to see molecules with our eyes? We look into the microscope and see it. No. They actually do have special instruments. We had talked about that when we were doing the atom, but you're still not necessarily seeing it with your eyes. It's actually just uh, giving us feedback by hitting something against it as to what it might look like, okay, and projecting it. But it's not still not really seeing it, okay? So this is a mole of water, and the question is, how did I figure this out? This is a mole of sulfur, okay? That's a mole of sulfur, kind of looks similar. This is a mole of salt, this is a mole of sugar, and this is a mole of copper sulfate, okay? Now the question is, what is the same and what is different about all of these? Well, there's only one thing that's the same about them, and it's similar to saying that you have a dozen of something. You could have a dozen cars, you could have a dozen crayons, you could have a dozen computers, you could have a dozen people. What's the one thing that's the same about saying that you have a dozen? There are 12 of them. That's the only thing that's the same. And doing this is the same thing. You could have a mole of anything, but really, you're only gonna have a mole of like things that are really small, like the atoms and the molecules and the formula units. So the question is, why is it that they weigh a different amount? Well, if you had a mole of computers, or if you have a mole of eggs, would they weigh different amounts? Yeah, just like the dozen would. So these also weigh different amounts. And what they base these on, what a mole is, and this is going to come back to what some of you may have already been asking yourselves, is what does that red number mean? Well, we know it's the atomic weight. 
And we know that it's the average weight, and we said that it was calculated by doing this thing that I, we had come up with this little saying, and it's, everybody say it with me, shift your decimal, two loops back, multiply by the mass, add the numbers, shiggity shack. Okay. That's how that number was calculated, was by taking all of the isotopes of that particular element and figuring out the average of those isotopes by percent abundance. And so that was what that calculation did for us. But the thing is, if you really thought about it, and you're like, sodiums is 22.98. 22.98 for sodium for what? Probably doesn't make a lot of sense, okay? So to think of having 23 approximately somethings of sodium, we know that atoms are really, 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 really small. So how did they get this number? What does that actually mean? What they did was, they said that that number was how many grams you have per what? Per mole. They, we called them AMUs, atomic mass units, but what that number is, is that number tells you how much a mole weighs. So when you see these red numbers, when they took those, when they did those averages, it was actually based on weighing a mole of them, okay? They actually based it on carbon-12, so that was how they actually got the ratios of the atoms, was through carbon-12, and then they ended up calculating what the other ones would be. So they're all based on a scale from carbon-12. And that was something that it says, so right there on the periodic table, you see that it's based upon carbon-12, and it says in parentheses indicates the most stable or the best known isotope. So that's where that was. All right, so fine if we can get the atomic weight of one atom, but what if I said I wanted the atomic weight of hydrogen, or what if I said that I wanted the atomic weight of water? What's the formula for water? H2O. Guess what you need to do? If I wanted the mass of the um, mass or atomic mass of water, then I would say it's one gram per mole, or 1.00794, depending on where you're going to stop. And I'll tell you, we're all going to stop at the tenths place when we do these. Okay? It's going to make adding and subtracting a lot easier for us. So with the rules for adding are different from multiplying and dividing. We're always going to stop at the tenths place, and when you add, as long as you know where your last estimated digit is, if it's always going to be in the tenths place, then your answer is going to be in the tenths place. So it'll make it easier for us. So how do you think you're going to calculate water? What do you think you would do? Times what by two? The H. And then what would you also add? One oxygen. And oxygen you're probably going to memorize. It's not going to be 15.9994. If we round it to the tenths place, what would that be? 16.0. Perfect. You have to stop at the tenths place, even if it's a zero. And oxygen's really easy because it's eight, but then times two, so it's 16.0. And oxygen's in so many compounds that you'll end up memorizing oxygen's molar mass. Okay? So that's it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call them L charts, and we're basically just going to draw out um, the, to use this L, and then we're going to put the molar masses in. So we're going to skip all this. We'll come down to it later. So starting at the back of the room, I want you to find iron, okay? So it's number 26 on the periodic table, and I want you to stop at the tenths place and tell me what the mass would be, and it says 55.845. So stop at the tenths place, and what would your answer be for iron? 55.8, done. Remember, it's round up or not. Or not means stop, just cut off your number if it doesn't round up. And the units are going to be grams per every mole, or grams per mole, and mole is abbreviated MOL. That's just one, so we don't have to worry about doing an L chart for it. I'm just going to do a couple more of these before we start doing this. And uh, so we're right here at arsenic, and please tell me, if you round to the tenths place, what would you get for that? 74.9. Remember, it's round up or not. 74.9. Awesome. Okay, next person, what about gallium, number 31? What would you say that is? Perfect. Stopping at the tenths place would make it 69.7. Next person, let's try this one. Selenium. So now it's a 9, and you're looking at the 6, which means it will round up. So what do you think that is? 79.0. Awesome. 79.0. That's a hard one, okay? So remember, a 9 rounds up to a 10, so that would be 79.0. Next person, what about silicon right here? Nice, because that 8 is going to round the 0 up to a 1. Next person, what about aluminum? Uh, 27.0. Perfect, 27.0. What about bromine, number 35? 
79.9, don't change it. You stop right there. Remember, it's round up or not, okay? All right, so let's come back here and let's try SO3, okay? So I'm going to make a little, it's kind of like an L, okay? I know I'm kind of pushing this a little bit, but I've got S and I've got O. So you're gonna write the two elements that are in there. You have to separate, but even if it's polyatomic ion, separate it by elements. Next person, how many sulfurs do I have here? One. One. Next person, how many oxygens? Three. Three. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by the molar mass now. So for sulfur, next person, find sulfur on there, and what's the molar mass of sulfur? 32.1. Awesome, 32.1. So I'm gonna write 32.1 on there. Next person, do you have oxygen memorized? You don't have to yet. Point zero. Good. Point zero. You always want to stop at the tenth place, even if it's a zero. So if I add these up, you can multiply and then add, or you can just put it in your calculator. So it's really 16 times 3, which is 48, plus 32.1. So some people like multiplying first up to you and then adding it together. So we get 80.1 as our answer. And don't forget your units, grams per what? Per mole. That's how many grams it is for every one mole. Okay, MgCl2. So here we're gonna do this again. I've got Mg and I've got Cl. Okay, next person. How many Mgs do we have? One. One. Can you tell me what the molar mass is, please? Awesome. 24.3. Very good. Next person, Cl. So we're at the back of the next row. How many Cls are there in here? There's two. Two. Next person. 5.5. Awesome. It says 35.45, but the five rounds it up to a five. Same thing. We're going to get 24.3 plus 71.0. And if we add that up, we get 95.3 grams for every mole. This one's the hardest one because we haven't done one that has a polyatomic ion in it. So when you're doing a polyatomic ion, if there's a number outside the bag, that gets distributed in. Okay, so don't forget that. So let's do our L chart first. Let's make our L chart. We've got calcium, we've got phosphorus, and oxygen. So you're going to break up your polyatomic ion into the elements. Next person, how many calciums are there? Um, three. Three. Next person, how many phosphorus? One. One. But there's a two outside oh. the bag. So two. Two. What this means is that I actually have two PO4s. Okay? So next person, how many oxygens would you have then? Four. Plus four, which gives you eight total. Awesome, it's four, but then times two. So you're distributing that, okay? So that makes it eight, all right? Times. Okay, so next person, can you find calcium and tell me what the molar mass is of calcium to the tenths place? 40.1, perfect. Next person, what's phosphorus, please? 31.0. Awesome, 31.0. And next person, do you have oxygen memorized? 16.0. Nice, okay. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna multiply these and then we're gonna add them up, okay? So we've got 120.3, you don't have to do this in your head, okay? 62.0, 16 times eight, is that 128? Confirm, yes. Yeah. Okay, and so then I'm gonna add this up, 310.3 grams per mole. 310.3 grams per mole. If you go to the worksheet, all you're gonna do is you're gonna write the formula and then you're gonna L chart it. So let's do aluminum nitrate. Aluminum nitrite, you need to know how to do the formulas first, which the way you would do this is you would write AL, and aluminum has a plus three charge, it's ionic, so you have to do your charges. Do you remember what nitrite is? And if you don't, you can go back and use your, your polyatomic ion sheet until you really get it down. NO2, negative one, there's one moon, put it in a bag. Then you crisscross, and when you crisscross, you get Al1, NO2, three. So I'm gonna L chart it, I'm gonna make an L. I'm gonna write Al, N, and O, okay? Next person, so how many aluminums are there in here? One. Just one. Can you tell me what the molar mass is of it, please? Uh, 27.0. Perfect. 27.0. Next person. How many nitrogens? Three. Three. It looks like one, but don't forget to distribute. Awesome. So that's three. Next person, can you tell me the molar mass of nitrogen, please? Uh, nitrogen, it is 14.0. Good. 14.0. 
And next person, how many oxygens are there? Six. And next person, what is the molar mass of oxygen? 16.1. Perfect. 16.0. Nice. And all you're going to do again is you're going to multiply and then add. If you can add this up and tell me what you get, please. It should be, is it 165.0? Does that yeah. sound right? 165. Yeah. Okay, and then grams per mole. Right? So that's what you're doing.